Hello everyone, welcome to another review. This time it will be a comparison between the LG G8 and the Samsung Galaxy A51. Now the full name of the LG G8 is the LG G8 ThinQ, but for the purpose of this video I'll be referring to it as the G8 and for the purpose of this video I'll be referring to the Samsung Galaxy A51 as the A51. Both of these phones were released in the year 2019. The G8 was released in April of 2019 and the A51 was released in December of 2019. The G8 is selling for 487 to 400 US. In some cases it can be higher than that but generally not less than 400 US. The A51 is selling for 250 US and up, maybe upwards to 300 US, a little bit more than that but it doesn't generally go over 300 US. So there is generally upwards maybe of over $200 price difference between the two. So bear that in mind in this comparison. So essentially comparing last year's flagship against one of the best mid-rangers of last year or late last year as you would want to say. So with that in mind, let's get into this review. Now the LG has a 6.1 inch display which is an AMOLED display which is the first for the G-Series to have uh, AMOLED display. The, the Samsung Galaxy A51 however has a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display. They both have 128 gb of storage. The LG has 6 GB of RAM. The LG G8 is sporting a flagship processor in that it has the Snapdragon 855. The A51 however is sporting a mid-range processor and that is as the Exynos 9611 made by Samsung itself. The Samsung Galaxy has a 4000 mAh battery, whilst the LG has a 3500 mAh battery. They both boast the battery life, and you could probably even go further. I can definitely say the LG battery life is definitely over 8 hours. Um, so screen on time, which is fantastic. The Samsung, I don't think, despite having a larger battery, is not as long lasting but it definitely will get you through most of the day into the night and probably into the morning itself so they're both very good when it comes to battery life the lg has three cameras in this era of multiple fancy cameras the lg has three cameras two in the back and one in the front the samsung galaxy however has five cameras four at the back and one in front i will come back to talking a little bit more about the cameras in the future but let's leave it like let's go through the rest of the specs. They, are, they both have USB type C charging. They both have quick charge, except the LG has a faster rate of quick charging. And they both have Android 10 with possible updates coming in the future. They also both have headphone jack, uh, except that the LG has a quad dock, which is much better than the, the headphone jack that the Samsung Galaxy has. So this is just a brief overview of the specs. So let's actually handle these devices and let you see how exactly they work. So Samsung Galaxy has a beautiful screen and a beautiful display and a beautiful body overall. Now it is uh, what we call a plastic and glass build. The front is glass which is Gorilla Glass 3. The frame is plastic and the back is plastic or what, they, or what Samsung calls glastic. Now it's quite beautiful, the color is very beautiful and it does not feel cheap by any means. So I dare anyone to say that this thing feels cheap. Now if you have a, a look at it you will see that it has a sim ejector tray. Now this actually both two sims and the uh, micro SD card which is a bonus for those who want dual sim support and something I think for, for mid-range phones I think that is almost like a, a necessary requirement okay so it has one microphone up top you this one it is all you see on top there's no microphone on the left side on the bottom you have the headphone jack which is very much appreciated USB type, type C charging another microphone and we have the speed button firing speakers at the left or the right side sorry 
it has the O button and the volume up and, con up and down control. I don't see any other microphone, so that makes it two microphones, one on the top and one on the bottom. The LG, as you can notice, it has two cameras. It has the fingerprint sensor that is built into the body, which is still very accurate. On the left hand side, it has the volume up and down control. On the top, it has just the one microphone. On the right hand side, it has the power, power button and it also has the same tray. You notice that it doesn't have the what we call the Google, Google button anymore, but I think if you use the power button, you can actually get to access the Google button. So at the bottom, the bottom now we have the microphone and we have the speaker grill as well. Now, I believe this part here as well is another microphone which allows for better sound quality as well and it releases the very pressure. We have the button firing speaker and the headphone jack. Now this this phone is has a body call surround sound feature and it has both a button firing and a front firing speaker. But I think is if you look at it, actually you just see the notch, you don't even actually see the speaker. Right? But this glass itself is the speaker. Don't mind my screen protector on it. You see that the Samsung Galaxy has a punch hole display, but the LG has a notch. So when you look at these screens, they're both vibrant, they're both beautiful, but the LG is has a denser screen and a higher quality of display than the Samsung Galaxy. As you can see, both these screens are quite beautiful in their own way. Um, I think the phones in, in operation, so it's generally very responsive and uh, there's so much you can do to alter this phone alter these phones or change um, the features of these phones so what i'm going to do i'm just going to go into the speed aspect which is another important part of it hey google all right and uh, let me see open youtube Okay, so that was a bit of a trouncing. Hey Google, open samson.com. Okay, so LG won that one. Oh, is there two different sounds? Oh, okay, okay. I think LG, yeah, LG won that one. Uh, hey Google, open Play Store. Okay. Clear one for LG. One, two, three. Okay, so just ensure that you don't notice, but they both had brightest, are the brightest. The screens are probably not at the brightest, but 50%. But let me just put it to the brightest. So you can see comparison of colors, how they look. It's a bit blown out, so let me just turn on the brightness levels a little bit more. Okay, as you look at them, the sound is quite different. So, it seems to me that
Okay, so you, have, you make a gesture for yourself as to which song's louder. Let's move on to the next game and uh, let's go. The game requires some level of processing, so that will be the de determining factor. And wow! The Samsung was able to win this. That is amazing. Now these two devices have different cameras. Uh, the I will start with the Samsung because it has the most cameras. So the A51 has a 40 megapixel standard camera. It has a 12 megapixel wide angle camera or ultra wide angle camera. It has a 5 megapixel macro and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Now that is supposed to help with selfies, essentially to make selfies better. Now with the 48 megapixels, it sounds a lot, but it will not be shooting most pictures at 48 megapixels. You actually have to enable it to shoot pictures at 48 megapixels. And most persons who are photographers will tell you that you should not shoot pictures at 48 megapixels anyway. It uses pixel bending to allow the pictures to be clearer or sharper there. Now the LG has three cameras in total, and it has two at the back. One of them is a 12 megapixel standard camera and a 60 megapixel ultra wide camera. Now the LG has an 8 megapixel front facing camera with 1.7 f-stop and 26 mm wide angle. Now the A51 has a similar wide as in 26 mm wide but the sensor is not as open or not as wide or, or large as the LG's. It is 2.2 and what does this mean and although the Samsung also is 32 megapixels the LG is supposed to capture more light while the Samsung can use its 32 megapixel camera to make the image sharper if possible now if you look at the photos side by side what you will see is that the Samsung Galaxy A51 tends to take the pictures that are more saturated or if the LG is a bit more true to life and the wide angle is wider than the Samsung Galaxy in the night, the LG performs better, even in the regular shots and in the wide angle shots, you will see a bit more light. And overall, the shots are just better at night through the LG because of the wider sensors. And the Samsung, however, can take really good pictures like this. And but side by side, you realize that the LG is better and there's more light as well. So those are just some of the things you need to take take into account. Now, when it comes to the front facing camera. The battle gets more interesting. In the day, it seems to be in favor of the Samsung, but at night, LG seems to be to do a bit better, especially when the color rate reproduction and overall quality. This is a video of the Samsung Galaxy A51 and the LG G8. Uh, both are on tripods and I'm just walking to see the stability of them both. Both are on 1080p. And I think this is maybe the best representation of it. This is just a stability test because once converted, it may or may not have the same frame rate. So this is just to show you how it is walking with it. As you can see, the LG is much wider, and the but they both look quite clear and uh, quite liking it. The, the, quite liking it. The LG looks a more saturated. Than the Samsung. I'm not sure if that will clear up when I test it out in the post production, but it looks a bit more saturated. They call it pop more. And the Samsung, no, actually, um, the LG in this instance is actually more true to life. I, yeah, it looks more true to life. They always it seems a bit poppy. It is actually the reality because it's a nicely lit afternoon. And uh, okay, it's interesting. Alright, so this is just a video test of it. Overall, when it comes to like software and handling, I think it is really and truly up to you. I think they both are snappy. Of course, the LG is snappier. Um, it's just generally faster. It, there's less slowdowns when things are being done. When, like if when you're updating it, you can see that there's less slowdowns. But that is to be expected. And with the price being higher, you definitely would expect the performance to be better. So the question is, is this performance $200 more than the Samsung? And my answer would be yes, definitely. Outside of all that we have stated before, it must also be noted, and I guess unfortunately I missed it at the beginning, 
the LG is actually has a mill spec rating is IP68 watt and dust resistant which unfortunately Samsung does not have this means that the LG is more durable you can actually take it around in the rain you don't and you don't have to worry too much about it you can actually drop it a bit more and, and you shouldn't worry too much about it especially if you have on a case because the glass the glass and glass will break the Samsung is built to do what it's supposed to do which is to make your usage as simple as possible to give you as much speed and much camera ability as much as possible and then what I can tell you is this this phone is spectacular for its price the LG uh, what I would definitely say is a steal for the price that it is right now both of these phones are just perfect for the for the categories and I can recommend both of them so in this battle I would certainly pay the additional money to get the LG G8 instead of getting the Samsung Galaxy A51. However, if you decide to get something like A51, that is still a really good buy because it is worth that price. And that brings me to the end of this video. As I usually say, if you like what you've seen today, then let me know by clicking like. If you have any suggestions, questions, then leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe. This is Acer here once again, and I will see you again in another video.